Welcome back to Auto Geek Show Car Garage here in sunny Stewart, Florida. I'm your host, Mike Phillips, and I got some very special guests with me here today. We have Max McKee, the CEO of Palm Beach Motoring Accessories, and he's here. He's going to do a little bit of talk in a second. Over here, I got Matt Steele from Truck U on Speed Channel and his co-host, Bruno Massell. He's also the co-host, and these guys also do their own gigs on the side. Matt's in charge of Trucks Gone Wild, which is just huge, wild monster trucks. He's also a spokesperson for Auto Geek. And Bruno races a, it's a funny car, right? Uh, Chevrolet Cobalt. Chevrolet Cobalt. And so we sponsor that. If you're down here at Diesel Fest or watching any of the video footage, you'll get a chance to see his car. What do you think? All right. Mike, we we'll appreciate that for everybody out there. And the, on the out on the, the pavement, under the tent. I uh, hope you can watch this in here with us. Uh, appreciate everybody coming here. Yes, uh, really. This is all about education, about having fun, about dancing, drinking, <laughs> eating good food, meeting good people, and seeing people that we don't normally get to see because we do so much business over the internet. It's nice to have these gentlemen here to help us put this together. And uh, we appreciate everything Mike does. Michael's having a brand new show. It's going to debut. Uh, when's that going to debut? This Sunday, April 3rd, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Fox Sports Network. The name of the show is? What's in the Garage. All right. That's it for Mike. And all you do is Yeah, Mike, that's exciting. And it's exciting to start this new partnership with AutoGeek.net and TruckU. And then my side business, Trucks Gone Wild, TrucksGoneWild.com. If you get a chance and you like big trucks doing crazy stuff that they shouldn't ordinarily be doing, by, sure, by all means, go there and check out that website. There's some pretty cool stuff. We've got the trailer out there. And I don't know if it's, I don't know, if it, is this the best class or something? This is the best it, class. I don't know if it's better because it's getting hotter outside. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, we're going to take it, right? I don't think you can get any more people in here. This We've got a perfect. great air conditioning system in here. It, it is. It feels great. So we're, we're excited about everything. You know, earlier today, I was talking about really the, the synergy of Bruno's racing team, Trucks Gone Wild, Truck U. AutoGeek.net, all of that coming together. It's really exciting about all the possibilities that, that have already happened and, and where this is going to go in the future. Who knows? Yeah, it's great to be a part of that, kind of the new guy here on the block, you know, and, and these guys welcome me open arms and everybody on the forums have as well. I, uh, besides doing a host and truck you with this guy, I actually get to have some fun. I race on the NHRA circuit. Uh, we were fortunate enough to win the World Championship in 2009, and we started a new relationship with AutoGeek.net this January. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we won our first event in Palm Beach, Florida, so we're off to a great start, and we're looking forward to getting the number one back on the AutoGeek car this year. So thanks, Max, for coming along board this year. And Mike Detail, my motorhome, and it looks brand new, so I owe him a big gratitude of thanks. Our big uh, thanks, and Matt Steele, well, I'm stuck in contrary to what he might say, I'm not like Paul that horrible. Really, I am pretty easy. He has his issues, but that's a whole other story. Thank you guys all for coming out. You know what, check in with us. We're going to pop on the forums from time to time. You can follow my racing and follow his gigs. And we'd like to interact with you guys along the way. We're, we're trying to put together a big unity of our families here. We've got a bunch of different things going on. And Matt's got some new projects. I've got some new projects. Mike's got this new show. And I think this is just the start of a lot of big things for AutoGeek.net and everything we're doing. So uh, cool. please check in with us on the forum and stay involved. Thanks. And collectively, it's all the car hobby. It's just different dimensions. It all kind of merges together, forms one. Yeah. Sure. And we have to be very fortunate. It all happens because of people like you. Yeah. That's right. And we're all very humble that you support what we do. We'd like to give back to you and we can continue to do things like this. This is being streamed out in the parking lot, but it's also being streamed all over the world. There's people in Australia looking at this right now, and in Great Britain, talking about us guys here and you. So watch what you say on TV here, because people are going to see all over the world. And without any other to say, let's do it and uh, yep. teach them up. Okay, let's do it. All right, let's, oh, wait, 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 wait. Did anybody want to take any pictures with any of us before we start here? You can come up here, either individual or us as a group. We have a photographer. We got a photographer. Anybody? Uh, if you want to come up, fine. And Don't be shy. Come on up. It's okay. Hey, come on. Hey, it's fine. We get paid to do this. Come on. <laughs> we'll be at the beer tent. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but don't the pictures start getting it's better? Easy. Yeah. The, the, the paint is minimal. All right. The paint is minimal and it's very okay. 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 You ready? All right. The last one. The last class had 30 out of 30. What's with you, folks? Come on. Hey. I'm pretty shy. I'm scared by telling them they're be on the World Wide Web. I think they just want us out there where we're sweating. But anyway, have a great class, everybody. We'll see you later. Thanks, Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Yep. You guys, uh, we'll, yeah, 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 we'll suffer in the air-conditioned room here. We'll just suffer, okay? So, hey, we are looking for Dr. David Gaddusi. <laughs> okay, well, we'll wing it. That's the guy that actually owns the company, Optimum Polymer Technologies, 
And uh, and we're also looking for, I, th I think Joe's going to be here or not. Yeah, he might not be. He's out there checking out the cars for the judging. Okay. Well, we have a special guest here today. A uh, big hand of applause for Rennie Doyle. Okay. Professional detailer. Uh, he can teach you how to run a buffer. He can teach you how to run the business. Both are important. Okay. And uh, this class today, if you sign up for it, this is Optimum Palmer Technologies. Anybody here use their products? Okay, anybody here interested in their products? Okay, look at the hands go up there. Okay, what's kind of cool is I kind of, um, when I titled this, I talked about it as the spray-on class, because a lot of his products, he's the guy that kind of introduced uh, something new to the industry, spray-on polish and spray-on compound. And I think most of us are used to like a ketchup bottle and you squirt it on and you buff it. So this is a new approach. This kind of comes from his background of manufacturing products for the OEM, the original equipment manufacturer, which in this case would be the car manufacturers, the assembly lines okay after the cars are painted at some point they they are inspected for defects any place where there's a defect is marked they're pulled off to what's called a polishing deck and at that point usually a team of about four people go in one guy will sand one guy will cut one guy will polish another guy will inspect it's done really fast and the spray on technology works really good for that because it's a fast way to get the part you want to a small localized area fix a problem, kick the car back on the assembly line, shoot it on down the line. Well, he just took that idea and kind of introduced it to the detailing and then the enthusiast world, and it's been a real big hit. And his products work really well. So he's actually a polymer chemist that makes his own products. And, uh, and I'm a big fan of them, and I know Randy's a big fan of them, and here's your chance to use some of them today. Um, let's go to the PowerPoint here. Okay, machine to, oh, give me a second here. We backed up so we had a really nice looking there we go. Can somebody f go find this? The, okay, yeah. We want. We actually want the guy behind the camera. So you just want to find a seat. Is there any seats left open anywhere? There's one up here, maybe for the lady. And is there a chair back there in the corner? There's a chair back there in the corner. Okay. Hey, and here comes Joe. <clears throat> Anyway, one of the products that Dr. David Gaduzzi is the most famous for is called NOR. This is, this is a no-rinse product. Anybody here use this product? You know, come on up, David. What's really cool about this product is in a lot of places you don't have access to free-flowing water. You know, there are some countries where it's actually illegal to wash your car with free-flowing water. Um, maybe you live in an apartment or a condominium. You don't have access to a garden hose. This is a way, or detailers. You know, a lot of detailers, like when I, where I came from in Southern California, when you wash a car, you've got to reclaim your wash water, your rinse water, your runoff water. And that becomes a big hassle. So here's a way to wash your car without a source of free-flowing water. It's actually a multi-purpose product. You can use it for a number of different things. But Dr. David Gaduzzi. Best Pleasure to have you here. Big round of applause. Okay. You were probably out there at the barbecue pit. I was and I or the no bear gardens. <laughs> oh, That's okay. okay. Hey, we're just happy to have you here. Anyway, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be cover some of his products and then uh, we have a rental car here and we have uh, rotary buffers, DA polishers. So if if, if you want to try some of these products, spray them on and check them out, or just try some buffing with them. We're going to get to that after we get to the PowerPoint presentation. So first of all, I think we want to do is um, uh, just, could you just share some of your background real quickly with the audience here? Uh, sure. I uh, uh, have studied mainly uh, organic chemistry and polymer chemistry uh, for about uh, 12 years. I worked in the uh, manufacturing paint for automotive. Uh, companies and uh, so, on PPG. PPG. So let's break that down. So here's a guy that helped to design and create the formulas for the paint on the cars. Okay. Now, doesn't it make sense that would actually help you to make the chemicals that you're going to put on the paint? Okay. To me, that's a powerful. That's credibility right there. A lot of powerful credibility. And in, in the 90s, as you all know, the clear coat paint technology changed. Uh, tremendously going from uh, single stage paint to yep. uh, base coat, clear coat paint. So we started designing products that are specifically made for newer paint <laughs> technology systems. And that's what the optimal parking products are. They're uh, uh, designed for newer paints. They're very easy to use, environmentally friendly, but you also get better results across the board with every product. And uh, uh, in terms of Washing, you know, with no rinse, you minimize the amount of water used to two gallons. It gives you better results than a traditional uh, soap, which is a very old technology. 
and it's uh, high lubricity, so it creates a very slippery surface, so you can get the dirt off without having to grind into the paint. Absolutely, and uh, it would encapsulate dirt. And uh, as you look in the bucket, you see all the dirt uh, going to the bottom. Let's pass this the around. Uh, we were doing some numbers, and uh, over a million washes have been done with Norris uh, wow. globally. We shipped to about over 20 countries. And all the users that have used the product, they all agree that uh, they get better results with Norris than the traditional wash. Uh, so, you know, this is a better way, newer way, and of course, uh, we don't have the mint, but we got the new mint that makes it even faster and easier to use with Norris. Hey, can you reach up behind you and there's a black bucket? Grab that black bucket. So look inside. Is there a mint in there? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you ever play frisbee? There we go. You can use it for as frisbee too. But. Yes, it's a frisbee and a wash bit. So after you're done washing your car, you go out and play with the dog or a good friend. Uh, this you, uh, is tight enough that it won't slip off your hand and you dip it in the bucket. Just like you do a normal wash. You start from the top of the car, you wash, then you dip it back in the bucket and uh, get all the dirt off and do the next panel till the whole car is done. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to wash. You dry the car, there's no water spotting. You can wash it inside the yep. garage. Whatever. If it's snowing outside, you can't get outside to wash your car, you can wash your car in your garage. Yeah, right. This is kind of the product that kind of start, jump-started you know, your name recognition in the online world, if, I, if I'm reading it correctly. It's, it's uh, talked about online. Everywhere. Quite a bit, and, and it's used on very dirty cars. Uh, you, know, you can uh, view videos all over, from all over the world on, uh, with this product. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, the rest of the products make the process easier uh, quite a bit too. This is another polymer-based uh, uh, latest technology in protection. After you wash with no rinse and you dry your car, you just spray this on a, a foam pad and you wipe it on the paint. There's no residue. It's a pure sealant polymer. It takes 10 minutes to cover the car. The last six months with deep water, it protects the paint better than any uh, uh, traditional life appeals, and uh, it, it, uh, there's no residue to remove. It's just, you just put the sealant on and you, uh, let it cure on itself, on its own. Uh, this bottle has 80 applications, so it's very cost effective as well. Yes, you had a question. What about bugs? It actually, if you, uh, uh, as you're washing, uh, or if you um, leave it a uh, little bit, uh, spray it on the well, you have bugs. Like pre pre-treated? Pre-treated, right. It will uh, soften, them soften up. it up so you yeah. can wipe it off. Uh, this product, as Mike said, is, uh, has multiple uses. You can take about eight ounces of that product and uh, make it, uh, add it to a gallon of water or make a gallon of solution with water. You can use that as a quick detail for washing outside or inside your car. You can put two ounces into a gallon of water and make a great clay loop, clay loop. Uh, yep. with that product. Uh, and uh, for glass cleaning, a lot of people take six ounces uh, diluted to a gallon of water. They use it for automotive glass or home use. Yeah. So, How about brake dust? Uh, no, it's not going to be. It, it, I mean, you can walk, clean uh, brake dust on most wheels. If it's baked on, yeah. that's not going to take yeah. it up. You need yeah, that's more, yeah, some little more powerful, little more bite. More powerful, yeah, like uh, power clean. Okay. Uh, power clean is uh, an all-purpose. Cleaner again, one product can be used for all your interior and exterior use. For wheels and tires, you can uh, use this product after your whatever product you're using right now for cleaning tires. Use this afterwards and see how much dirt still is left behind. And you'll be amazed. And, and if you do the reverse, you should see nothing coming up. So, and clean spray dust, it, you can dilute it uh, five to one uh, for the interior uh, cleaning. And for paint clean, you can dilute it three to one and spray it on the box. It will melt the box off your car. Uh, in fact, if you use it straight on paint, it's very safe. It's not going to uh, etch the paint. But if you dilute it three to one or five to one, you get a lot more mileage out of it. For uh, spray wax, is another. Uh, Sure, let's just run through the product lines. This is a great product. You know, the first time I use this, a lot of times you use a spray wax. It seems like just kind of a 
uh, a, a spray detailer on steroids, you know, just a little bit more amped up gloss coming from it. As soon as I started using this product, I was like, wow, I am really depositing a coating of something, you know, of course it's polymer technology, but it, it was very apparent the first time I used this product, I was completely impressed with it. Okay. Go ahead. But well, tell us about it. Sure. Uh, this, as uh, Mark said, this contains uh, polymers as well as conumbo wax. And as you're wiping it in, you're actually melting the wax and depositing the polymers on the paint. Uh, you could test this on a, on a uh, glass panel. You can spray this and let it dry. And as you're, uh, after it dries, as you're wiping, you can see the wax melting. In fact, on uh, glass, on the side glass, if you use this, it'll act like raining and it lasts four to five months. And you can use it right after Norris. As you're drying, you can spray the wax and dry it in the car. So you, within 15 or 20 minutes, you wash, wash and wax your car inside the garage without even taking it out. Uh, and there's no chance of water spotting it, as we talked about earlier. Uh, the latest technologies we came up with was uh, that we did a video. Uh, yes, we did a couple of videos. Yeah, last year. the Hyper products. Hyper polishing compound. There, the first and only spray polishing compound in the marketplace and uh, they give you better results than traditional paste products. You can uh, prime the pad with one or two sprays and uh, the product has a very long working time so you don't need to keep applying more products. Incredibly product. long working time. No dusting. This thing has what we call in the detailing world is when you have a product and you're buffing with it, that's called the buffing cycle. Sometimes I call it the, how much play time you have. Now some products have a very short buffing cycle. That means they start to dry up, start to dust, start to get cakey, start to get harder to buff with, and then wipe off is extremely difficult. Both these products have an incredibly long buffing cycle. They're very fluid on the surface as you're buffing. It makes buffing easier, get good lubrication. The cutting is excellent on both the compound and the polish, and then best of all, wipe off is easy. You know, and again, if you're buffing out a car, you know that takes a lot of energy, a lot of physical energy to buff out, machine buff, and every time you machine apply something, you got to come back and take that stuff off. So it's just, it's just a benefit to his product. So and, and most products uh, that I'm sure you've used in the past, they leave a lot of dust, so you have to clean up the car and the whole area. With these products, there's no dusting, so you just, as Mark said, you just wipe the minor residue that's left on the car, yep. and you'll be done. Plus, uh, the benefits of a spray is that uh, when you spray the product on the pad, you can prime the pad with one or two sprays and get the product on uh, most of the pad, so the whole pad is doing the buffing rather than yep. just putting the paste on, on a small area of the pad. So that means like when you when you take, if you're saying you're using a wool pad, you just spray that right on the face of the pad. When you start buffing, the entire face of that pad is going to work for you buffing. So it's it's 100% work, you're going to buff faster, get results faster. So, uh, and hey, you guys feel free to chime in anytime you want to. Yeah. So you, yeah. on your, on wool. you can use it on foam or wool, yes. So, and also, uh, since we started, Joe started. So if anybody hasn't met here, this is Joe Fernandez. On the internet, he goes by Superior Shine. I've known Joe uh, ever since, uh, wait, wait too long. But you've been detailing cars for how long now? Much too long as well. Okay. <laughs> but if, hey, here's one of the things I wanted to point out. While they're here, anytime they say anything, if you are in a detailing as an enthusiast or as a pro, especially you want to make money, listen to what they say. They will help you, okay? They're very smart. They're very, they're seasoned, seasoned professional one detailers. One of them. <laughs> seasoned. Seasoned, seasoned is a better word. One of us is the smart one, and we'll let them decide which one. Okay. And one is the smart one, one is the good looking one. There you oh, go. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, Joe, you wanted to uh, talk about the latest uh, All right. technology that we've uh, introduced. Actually, okay, right. I, don't know, I don't know what's in it. Okay, I'm not, I'm not a chemist. Go, let me start this up. For everybody who's watching, we're, we're launching a brand new product here at Detail Fest this year. And Joe, why don't you go ahead and just tell me that it's the Optico 2.0. Very good, that's what me on the spot in. Okay. I have no idea what's in it, why it works, or how it works. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a detailer, I'm a grunt in the field, and I can only tell you uh, what it does. After I get done polishing a car to perfection, right, I want something that's going to be very durable and it's going to hold up. And 
protect my shine. Actually, your customer wants something that's gonna last a long time too. I mean, well, if they're happy too, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, but you know, the boss has got a kind of respect for me. So, so Optico, uh, I don't even know what to call it. They always use Optico. <laughs> Hardcore. Uh, what, what would you call it? As a it it's, it's a coating. It's not a wag. It's a coating. So it's in, in, in a coating. yeah, in the world, in, in the detail world, we have typically what we would call a car wax, a paint sealant. Okay, a car wax. A lot of people think of as a waxy substance, like a carnauba wax. A paint sealant. Most people consider something like a, a man-made uh, polymer type product, but it's still you something you apply. It's going to wear off. This is actually going into the realm, and the term is coating. So you're going to put this on. And unless you want to take it off, it ain't coming off. It ain't, ain't going to wear off like a normal wax or a normal paint seal. So it's a very long-lasting, protective coating. I, I spend lots and lots and lots of hours polishing out cars to perfection. Um, it, it would, it's not uncommon to me to spend 30 to 50 hours polishing out a car. So when you get done with that, you want to treat the car to something that's going to really protect it, not something that's going to wear off in a few months or whatever. And even the best sealants and the best waxes, you know, I ain't gonna get into who's best, because that's a war I don't get into. But whatever you think in your mind is best, it doesn't come close to how long this stuff lasts. You know? Um, you, it's, it's in a syringe, so, because air dries it, right? So you push it out. If it were in a bottle, every time you'd open the bottle, air would get in. So it's in a syringe, you put a very little bit on here, I apply it to the car, and uh, the look that it has when it's ready to be wiped off is similar to how oil looks like when it's in water. It has a colorful, squeaky, purple and orangey looking thing, that's when it's kind of flashed off. And you stop me if I'm wrong, this is, this is what I do. And then, then, then you, kind of, you kind of give it a wipe, and then it's, 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 it's applied, it's set. Now, something you have to get used to for enthusiasts and for professionals, it's gonna feel a little bit rubbery to the touch. We like to polish our cars out and woo, I mean, you know, just rub all on our cars, you know. I've had to turn a hose on some of my employees, you know. <laughs> now, this has a little bit of a rubbery feel for it, but it cures, right? It takes, it takes a while to cure. Yeah, once it cures, once it cures, now the customer's got to feel it all slick, you know. Yeah. You can put a little something, uh, one of the spray wipes or something on top of it. He has to have that, that slick feel. But you explain to them that it's curing, and you can come out and, and, and touch all on it later on if you want to, you know. But this stuff is amazing stuff. Just Tuesday, I did a CL600, right? And I'm going to, I got a picture of it here. I'll pass around my, my phone. Just don't, don't call anybody. <laughs> and, and this is, hey, this no. is a cell phone. It's got a cheap camera. Can I, can I well, do that? Well, don't call his wife or his girlfriend. Yeah, or my girlfriend. <laughs> um, that's, that's a car we did, and, and I spent a lot of time polishing it out. And it's a full sun shot. Show, show the camera. Show the camera. Full sun shot. You know, I show everybody this picture, and then my daughter and my wife. <laughs> yeah. In that order? In that order. <laughs> here's a car yeah. I buffed out and so, here's my family. So, so it's a product that I really believe in and it's a, up now for the professional. How many professionals do we have in here? Show of hands. Right, we got about half, one and a half. Okay, this is an upsell. It's only for professionals, is that correct? Uh, this is going to be, product. yeah, okay. this is okay. the new one that's actually available to the enthusiasts. Okay. Yes. Now for an upsell, actually auto detailing, getting in the fields and being the grind, is uh, not the most profitable part of detailing. You know, we, we talked about the rag top thing, now we're talking about Optico. That's an upsell. You, you polish out that car, that's an easy upsell. I charge, uh, depending on my, if it's a regular kind of not a good $120 job just to put that on the car. And it doesn't really take much more to do it. You know, so it's an awesome product. You know, congratulations, Dr. Oh, G. Uh, well, <laughs> I, you know, you, you know one more about the application of it than I do. Uh, with, with uh, I formulated the price, but I don't know how to apply so. Right. <laughs> Everything Joe said. There you go. We'll and put that in the instructions. Joe says. <laughs> anyway, I put, it, I put it on trim. Let's pass this around. around. I put it on the paint. Let's pass this I around. I put some on my dog. It's busy. <laughs> <laughs> we tried a shiny dog. Shiny dog. We tried to pull it off. To yeah. how, how, Go ahead and pass that around. How hard it would be. And uh, it, the durability is just right. I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. Can you put that on glass? Um, Do you I recommend it for glass officially? I think uh, officially, no. yeah. You, you know, the it, because of glaring issues. Yeah, the, a lot. Of, a lot of times, just so you guys know, a lot of times what people want to know is whatever the wax they're using, they want to know if they can put on the glass. And and from my background working in the car industry. Unless a product is specifically formulated for glass, usually a manufacturer won't recommend it for glass because then you have to look through it. And if something were to get hazy or foggy and then you get in an accident, there could be a lawsuit and who's going to be liable? I don't know. What did you put on the windshield? So you want, so this is a product that's meant for automotive paints. Right. Yeah, and, and, and we're going to have more information on autogeek.net. So as this information, this is a brand new product, so... Uh, now, when I say I put it out there, uh, detailers, we naturally want to test it. That's right. Now here, this is, 
This is something you put on the interior. Well, I'm going to put some in the gas and see what happens. That, we're just crazy. You know? yeah. We got a test, and a lot of times we take what we do with it back to the manufacturers, and they go, wow, you can use it for that? Yeah, yeah it works great. And they'll test it, and they'll see it before they'll give uh, the thumbs up on it or not. So that's yes. what we did with that. So and a little bit goes a long way. So, so. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it, it spreads out really thin, real easy. It's very, it's very wet. I think, I think I get the professional model, and I think the only difference is that it comes with more. So it's more expensive and you get more. It's like buying one bottle of something or buying a gallon of something. So I think I get more. And out of my, my syringe is completely full, and I think um, an average we get about about eight vehicles. And that's some SUVs and some small cars. So about eight vehicles, I would say. Six to eight vehicles. Yeah. 40 cc's. Yeah, that, that should do about three to four. All you yeah, need is one, cars, right? Right. based on the uh, how Jose is buying. Anywhere from two to four cars, depending on how thick or uh, thin you apply. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about the chemistry. It's a moisture cure uh, pre-polymer, so, uh, or, or a coating, uh, clear coat, that it reacts with moisture. And just like uh, Joe was saying, that uh, that is why you don't want any air or moisture getting to it. Otherwise, it'll start polymerizing and, and gelling off. And uh, the benefits of uh, Optico is that it has better scratch and more resistance than uh, factory clear coat, uh, better uh, uh, chemical resistance, so it doesn't edge with uh, when you had. Uh, fall out or something in the rain. Off, you, know, you, know, you ever get water spots after you wash the car? You got water spots. You wash the car, but now there's little craters left in the paint. So that meant something in the water was corrosive enough to actually eat or etch into the clear coat. So what Dr. David Gaduzzi is saying is this coating actually offers better resistance to that than the clear coat that came on your car. Now I can prove that. Actually, what I've seen, we put it on the car. I have customers that call me every six months or every eight months, or whatever. We come back and we have our standard operation we go through. It has a few swirls. I've been taking to the car wash. We got to give it a light polish and do our thing. We come back and the swirls are not nearly as much as they were before. Now that it does totally like it. And, and it's nice because you can't correct it. It's on the, it's on the surface, but you can't correct it. Yeah, it's not gone. Go ahead. No, no, it's, no, no. it's still there. Right. right. So how many times have you used a protectant over your paint that you put on that you can correct and make it right. good again? Yep. Yeah. Would that be good on flat black plastic? It, it works on everything exterior except uh, glass. So you can put it, or, or you know, you can put it on rubber. You can put it on wheels. It makes uh, brake dust come off a lot easier. Uh, you can pressure wash the brake dust off after you've had the coating. You can put it on uh, headlights and on trims. It would make it uh, look dressed. But it, 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 yeah, if you take it like a, you know how like a lot of times the car will have black plastic trim, or the the, the rear view mirrors will be that black plastic. You put it on there, it'll darken it, make it look new, and it won't come off. So it'll hold up at, over time. And that, most dressings won't do that. So you're just going to be putting everybody out of business with this new product. Absolutely not. You can still smell wax or put wax or you know sealants on top of the paint after after you uh, uh, get you know the coating on, the coating on, there. on there. So if you want to prep a car for a, sh uh, a show or you want to get that deep wet sure. shine right. and you got a favorite wax like say the pinnacle wax which is famous on the show car circuit after you get the coating on there for the show that weekend throw a coat of thin carnival wax on there bring out that depth and warmth Absolutely. no problem no 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 connection no, no issues there's no uh, you know uh, negative issues with, with the coating it, it uh, now this is uh, as uh, Joe has been using it for about a year or so I think but we've had the product out for about three uh, years now and the feedback we're getting from our professional customers is that the product makes it so much easier to uh, maintain their regular customers' cars because the car washes off easier, cleans easier, everything comes right off, and they can still put wax or sealant on. It polishes easier, so it saves you time. But you can still charge as much or more than <laughs> before. Oh, and more. Yeah. And, and, and because the cars look better. Yeah. Uh, and that's another advantage of the coating, uh, OptiCoat, is it doesn't <coughs> oxidize like uh, factory clears. Factory clears, after three or four months, the paint is oxidized and everything starts bonding to paint. With optical, it doesn't oxidize, so it releases all the uh, contaminants. So as you're washing, everything comes right up. And we had an interesting thing in October <clears throat> is that we did paint you a few of your guys down, and I drove my Chevelle, 67 Chevelle from Idaho to Vegas. And right before I went down there, we had taken and did some rock chip repair on it. And as you know, if you take and you get the little rock chips, you still, you go from a big crater to a small crater, but there's color inside that crater. When we treated the front end of the Chevelle, 
for the trip, the next day, we couldn't see those small craters. So yeah. I was blown away yeah. because it, right. it took and it blended everything flat. Right. It was right. pretty, it's covering with a clear coat again. Exactly. And yes. we were just blown away. On that same trip, we left from Vegas to Southern California. We got in a little hoop situation with a truck with gravel. Oops. There wasn't, there wasn't, there wasn't, there wasn't a chip. So, so it's, uh, the durability's there too. Yeah. Great to hear. That's uh, it's our uh, real world te uh, test that we can't duplicate in the lab. And that was a white car. Yeah. So you yeah. know, it's, yeah. uh, that's the important there. car. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Well, that's that's uh, that's kind of fun. We get to introduce a brand new product to the market here at Detail Fest. And uh, do you want to go through any of these other products before we start working on the car? Uh, no. It's if you okay. Do Does anybody have any questions? Go ahead. Can the optical be applied with like a dual action polisher, or do you have to use it? You, you don't want to use any polish. This is not like uh, sealants or waxes. You, you cannot use any uh, polishing equipment with it. What you do is you just wipe it on. Ideally, you could spray the uh, car, but it makes it a lot more uh, you know, time. And, it becomes uh, more advanced to actually try so, to spray that on. So you just take yeah. your foam pad. Just like uh, uh, Jose was explaining, just like and this. yeah, it's yeah. in the back, and you uh, basically put a few drops on the pad. You go one panel at a time. You do it, you know, in one direction and the other direction, you know, in the horizontal and then vertical to cover the whole panel. Then you check it to make sure there's no uh, high spots or any rainbow effects, and you wipe any excess or even at that. If you don't do it right away, you come back, you know. Few hours later, it's cured, and then you have to polish it off. But yeah, yeah definitely you don't want to use any polishes. Really. Yeah, it's really a apply, spread out, work in, let it flash a little bit, wipe off the excess. Yeah, so you have a uniform look. Oh, yep. see him, right? Put it on. All right, come back and check it out later. <laughs> and oh man, you know, yeah, it's, it's tough to get off. Yeah, yeah it's. So that's terrible. Yep. Once you it's a coating, it not it's not a sealant, it's not a wax, it's an actual coating you're applying to the paint. And and that we should probably talk about surface prep. Because before you put this on, you just couldn't take a dirty car or a neglected finish. You need to make sure the paint has been per properly prepared <coughs> for the coating. So Absolutely. You, you want to remove all the uh, any scratch or swore marks, otherwise yep. it will seal it in. Yep. You want to remove uh, any uh, wax or sealant, otherwise it will affect the bonding. Yep. Once you have uh, you know, perfectly uh, clean and uh, and uh, more free paint. Then you put the coating on, and the coating after it cures, you can remove it with uh, detergents or alcohol or Prepsol. The only way you can remove it is polishing it up or using a paint remover. <laughs> so it haunts, uh, it's there permanently. Yep. All right, there's a question from the web, if I can interject here real quick. Sure. Um, can the alpha coat be used on a single stage or is it clear coat only product? It's designed for clear coat uh, paint, uh, and the single stage, it depends on the paint. If it's um, oxidized heavily and too porous, it uh, will not uh, be able to form an uh, even coat. But for... <coughs> Well, let, let me yeah, let me speak to that. Stage, sure. My truck has single stage paint, and so I went and I actually used the Optimum Hyper Polish, and I polished it out to remove any oxidation, rolls and scratches. Then I applied the OptiCoat, and as far as I can tell, I got a perfect bond. So, but I properly prepared the paint before I put the coating on. Had I not done that first, you know, it's a single stage. Single stage oxidizes a lot faster, a lot more readily than a clear coat. It's usually a much softer paint, older paint technology. So the key is properly preparing. But I know that David has told me, you know, behind the scenes that it was formulated for and optimized for clear coat technology. So if you use it on a, a single stage, just make sure you go through the right procedures first. Right. So. And can I add something? We add, um, well, we use wax and grease remover that you get at an auto body paint supply store. We, we get a brand new microfiber towel because, you know, I just got done polishing. So we get a brand new microfiber towel. We put this grease and wax remover on there. We wipe the car, and one of my employees will follow me with two clean, dry microfiber towels and just wipe off the residue. That's how we prep it after we polish it to put it up. To get it completely clean and ready for clean, bonding. Yep. And, and, that's, and that's important. I know a lot of guys in the internet world, they talk about wiping with IPA. And the problem with IPA is that um, it, it's, not, it's not a lubricant in the way that 
it's at the same time you're cleaning, it can also be softening the paint, and then you can put some scratches back in. If you come over and look at these two sections, I was doing compound testing over here. There's two different compounds that have been tested there. If you look at the top one, you can actually see some micromarring or some, some DA haze or tick marks, whatever you want to call it. Below, maybe a little bit, but it's actually, it's actually left a nicer finish. But if you look real carefully, you can see some real shallow lines going this way. That's where I sprayed with IPA, and then I wiped it. I had to pull the oils out so I could really see what the finish was. The problem with that is, is the wiping process, you risk marring the paint. So if you just detailed your car, now you want to go and strip it. You know, you want to use good, clean microfiber towels and good, is that Prepsol you're using or is it another name brand? Yeah, any, any, you know, from your, your local auto body paint supply store. Sure. They, and, and then, then what I did is I wrote a how to article that kind of recommends diluting IPA down. A lot of guys just get it and dump it straight out of the bottle and wipe it. That's way too hot. It's way too harsh. So dilute that down with some water first. It'll still pull the residues off, but it won't be so, uh, it won't be so uh, harsh on the paint itself. So. What percentage would you expect? Um, after talking to David, who is a chemist, and a couple other chemist friends of mine, they all recommended around 10%. So I wrote a 10%. Yep. Yeah, and so most isopropyl alcohol you buy is 50%, 70%, or 91%. So I wrote an article, and in the article I wrote down the, the mathematical equation of how to mix that properly in a 32 ounce bottle. I have three of them sitting right outside the yeah. door here. But, That's called the alcohol test? <laughs> yeah. That's out of the beer garden. My alcohol test is a little different, yeah. I, I wax the car, I go in and have a couple of beers, and then come back out and milk. Yeah. And if it still looks good, then we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> It doesn't melt up. It doesn't melt up. <laughs> <laughs> right, what would you recommend instead of IPA, IPA to avoid the scratching, uh, this micromarring that could be a consequence of this IPA? Well, you know, the um, final about... Final inspection or something like that? Or? Well, final inspection has glossing ingredients okay. in it to make paint look good. So, it, you know, um, final inspection is body shop safe. So it's, yeah. it's way above most spray detailers because yeah. it can be used in a body shop. I actually don't have a perfect answer for no. that, you know, because it's it's kind of a after you spend all day long polishing out a paint, the last thing you want to do is mar it before yeah. you seal it, you yeah. know. So um, one of the things I did talk to Dr. David about was that um, there's this term called miscible and immiscible. Okay, so I don't want to get into chemistry or anything. But usually the chemist that creates the preparation products knows how the coating is made so he can make the coating so it will interact properly with the whatever the agents used in the pre-products are. And that's called miscible. So the coating, and I think, and I don't want to speak for you, but did she say as long as you're using optimum products after you wiped it off, you could go right to the coating. Now, one thing you could do is you could just dampen with water a microfiber towel and just give it a light wipe just to make sure there's no excessive residues on there because you really want a clean surface to put this coating onto. You know, at the same time, you've got to balance that against not marring the paint, especially on something black where you spent 20, 30, 40 hours polishing it to perfection. Well, or, well, yeah. Something that I've experienced that time, many, many of these polishing compounds do contain fillers, even if they claim that they don't. Yeah, and on the internet, I just want to stop you right there. People call them fillers. Yeah, well, what about yeah. lubricating agents? Yeah. Okay, because if you, if you, you, people call them fillers, but you know what? You wouldn't want to take sand and water and buff out a car, so I got to look at, you need something to lubricate the surface and buffer the aggressive action of the, of the abrasives so the thing looks good yeah. when you're done. And all these guys on the forum just call them fillers, and that's the wrong term. They're lubricating yeah. agents, and if you don't want to use them, throw some sand in some water and try that and see how it looks. It ain't going to look very good. Okay, probably I'll get a perfect finish, but once then when I put my final sealant on, I, I, I check it out in the sun, it's, it's, it wasn't perfect. Yeah. I never got those last scratches. Yeah, well, and, that, and sometimes that just is a problem. Yeah. You know, this optical yep. thing. And that, you know what, and it depends on what you're working on, because sometimes we call that RIDS, random isolated deeper scratches yeah. that you're not going to get anyway, and you don't want to if it's a daily driver. But yeah. did I see another question out I there? Got, yeah, I go ahead. Um, actually, this is a good one. How long will the product stay usable after opening the syringe? The syringe uh, is not effective uh, over time, as long as you don't open <coughs> any air into it. So it, it lasts indefinitely, uh, as, as long as it's sealed. And, no, there's no air. The only thing I recommend, there you go, yeah, clean it, that needle when you get done with it. It has a needle and it has a lid. So you take the needle off, clean it, and put the lid back on it, you seal it again. And if you really want to get really precise, you know, you could bring the fluid up to the top of the opening and then put the lid on so there's no air gap even in the travel pathway there. So. And uh, the pad too, the foam pad or microfiber, 
if you use it, you need to wash it afterwards, and, and uh, otherwise it will it will harden. Uh, Mike, like we have time to actually do a demo. And put it on. We sure do. In fact, yeah. if we we, we talk through the products, it's time for hands-on. So I'll tell you what, take it away. You guys are the guests. Hey, Joe. Oh, all right. Now, being Germany, you have <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, thank you. Bye, guys. Yes, it's Randy down. He came and found you, didn't he? Prep it first there, Ray. Okay. You gotta prep the hood there first. Yeah. Put that in. Well, no, it, even if I die, I just mean the, the polishing there. I need to prep the pliers. Um, I had some optically. Will that work? Yeah. There you go. Can I squeeze right through here, guys? Thank you. You got it. Kind of, I'm kind of fanatical about it. I'll take a spray. This is a brand new bottle, so you want to prime it there. Yes. Oh, oh. can we make it just a little bit no, of open here for the camera? Okay, just me. Just you. That's fine. Yeah, I didn't prime them yet. My mistake. Oh. Yeah. Usually, what I do is I start the garbage can. Yeah, it's not going to. Let me go. I got another one. Did you guys use these soft vacuum? There you go. Thanks yet? Thanks, sir. Yep. Things are awesome. What I like about this first round of rotary is when I get into a spot, without fitting. I'm kind of fanatical about my pads, and so what I like to do is just give it a nice little squirt real quick with my hands clean, okay? Because I like to rub it out to the edges, get it nice and wet, okay? And then I'm just going to give it a light. This doesn't take much, okay? Because I put a pretty, pretty good spray on there before. What do you gonna, do right now? This, this, this is the hyper, hyper polish. polish. I'm actually, I'm actually oh, I, oh, priming yeah. it with itself, um, and at its preference. Some people like to put a little... Uh, uh, spray these are on, something like water. Um, I, I don't feel that water is a real good lubricant, so I like to use the product itself. Yeah. So all I'm going to do is here, we're going to turn it down. We're not making a hurry. Yeah, one second. And the reason for that is then you're not bringing a dry pad down on paint spinning. It's, it. it's lubricated. And 100% of the face is already wet, it. ready to go to work. Okay, so you guys, what, what, what am I going to concentrate on here? I don't want to cause holograms, so I'm not going to go. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to start this out. Do I see any splatter? Nothing, okay? Get it nice and even. I can adjust. Again, my quality, if I want to get a little, a little higher, I'll straighten up and I'll do a little, little smaller area. Cross at the end. There we go, okay? I'm like with Mike. I agree 100%. I don't like to take it down. I see some people take it all the way down to where it's gone, and I just don't like to go quite that far. I like to leave a little bit on, get the pad wet, leave it there, okay. and go for it. So, I want over and fill this though. It's really, even compared to when we went over it, I mean, it is really smooth. It's really easy. And again, if I do this, what's gonna happen? Okay, so if, I, if you're operating this, I say, hey man, bring, bring your butt down. That doesn't mean sit, okay? Hey, bring it on down, okay? Uh, who's who's had, had not had a chance to operate this machine yet? You, you young man, come on up. <laughs> <laughs>
just want to take it for a spin. So we're going to go ahead and prime that. Prime that uh, How do you define gold? What's that? How do you define gold? That's a good man. <laughs> Turn to the camera. There we go. <laughs> Cord over shoulder. We don't want to mar the paint on the rental car. <laughs> So, so Jim and Rennie, they can make this look real easy, but actually, it is pretty easy. The tool's lightweight. It is. The pads are soft. That's a flexible backing plate. It helps to keep the pad flat okay. when you're working on curves. Come on, man. Let's go. Who hasn't done this? Let's get you in. Step up. Be shy. Okay? <clears throat> and again, the nice thing about this, Show the Dr. G, camera. chip in. There you go. I'm a perfectionist when it comes to this product is not a, a, a molester of clear coat. Is it leaves healthy clear coat intact. And I think that's really important yep. because a lot of people go way too aggressive. They take up more paint than they need to. So what I want you to do, I'm going to drag it, keep going. It's going to be a nice pattern. We're going to overlap this time. We're going to back up. We're going to do a cross section. We're going to come down this way, back up. Keep coming down there, okay? There you go. Pretty smooth, isn't it? Something to do? It. Yeah. Now, now, just for fun. <clears throat> Really well, just for fun, anytime you have a body line, you know, a good habit is to buff up to it, but not on it. Okay. So, and a lot of cars have a like a raised body line here. So, usually what will happen is that you're buffing, you'll tend to, with your muscles, flutter onto it, but you just want to hammer on it. So, if you always aim to come up to it, you'll actually kind of hit it. That way it's polished and shiny like the rest of the paint, but okay. you're never actually buffing on top of it. And a new car with this clear coat intact, you're pretty safe because the paint's pretty hard. It's probably got all the thickness that came with the factory. But if you ever get you working on a car and you don't know who buffed on it before you, you know, that's where you get in a problem. If they didn't have those good habits, the paint will usually be thinner on all the high points. And here's an area that you might want to tape off before you buff out. You ever look down the squirters on these things and see them all chalked up full of wax and polish residue? If you go to my site and you look at any of the videos, anytime you see any of us doing any work, you'll notice that we've got a drop cloth draped over. You can also use, uh, my wife made me nice vinyl ones years ago. They come underneath and it saves you a lot of money from expensive tape. We actually have a name for this. It's called the beach towel tip. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'll usually do is, uh, tell you what, somebody hold this, is you pop the pop the hood open. Can we do that? Pop the hood. I'll show you. Now here's the problem. Now th think about this. See all this uh, this grill here for the fresh air intake? There you go. And you got this plastic up here, and the last thing you want to do, of course, if you're if you went to one of our classes, you learn how to throw, not throw splatter. But just in case you do, can you someone lift this up? Okay, now help me to bring this the bottom of this down. Okay. Now carefully close the hood. Let me a couple pieces of tape. One more. Yep. And by the way, since we were talking about uh, fillers, uh, polishes, these products don't or oils, uh, don't forget. The oils uh, that are in this product will wipe right off and with just plain microfiber or just uh, with a little bit of water. Uh, or so damp wipe. Damp yeah. So anyway, this is called the beach towel tip. Now we've covered the windshield the windshield wipers and the grill there. There's no chance against splatter, no taping. It was quick, it was fast. Your customer's walking by. You know, you could always get a towel with your name on it, do some marketing. It's in your pictures. But anyway, it's a real fast way to cover that area up. It's called the beach towel tip. Who's next? Who wants to run this polisher? This is the new Flex PE14 with Hyper Polish. Come on. Got any girls here? You just got down. How much high speed have you done? Hey, are you are you comfortable? None? Did you see how easy? I mean, it wasn't. It didn't vary. The nice thing about this combination with, with, and with a product like this Come on up it's here. not going to grab on you. It's not going to move all over the place on you. Yeah, let's, it's, it's a very user-friendly, safe product to use. Let's let this girl show all you big, strong guys how it's done. Okay, so you want to give this a brisk pump right on under the face of the pad. There you go. There you go. Cord over shoulder. Okay. Then place it against the paint. Turn it on. Lock the button. Go ahead, Ray.
Watch, go ahead and just put it through your hand. Step right up top. There we go, that's right. We're just going, we're only going to move your head back and forth. We're going to move up a little bit. And then back up. And what we're going to do is bring it down this way. Back up. And you carry on 50% every time. Just keep doing that. Keep looking that way. And then if you see it getting on edge a little bit, you go like this, just bring it back center. Just as simple as that. Just practice keeping that pad flat all the time. Look at that. And look, notice this hyperpolis is, is, there's always a film here. It's got a very long buffing cycle, and that pad is just gliding across the surface. It's a very nice polish. Compact is the same way. One of you big, big studs, come on in here. She just showed you guys up. Yeah. Uh, good job. And have you ever used a high speed before? What's that? This morning was the first time. That's it. Now she's a veteran. Yeah, you are. Season. Okay, come on, stud. Yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and wipe that yeah, down. Then let's put some OptiSeal on. Or opti yeah, OptiCoat. Yeah. Always shake well. I'll let you do. Why don't you turn so the camera can see? There you go. Perfect. Very good. He's got the cord over his shoulder. When you're following a curve like this, you want to take and roll that body to follow the curve that keeps yeah. the pad flat. Beautiful. So as long as you keep it level, you could do this instead of using an orbital? Well, that's, that's you're good at it. If you're, you need to practice. <clears throat> and the, the thing I always tell people is pain systems are different. And some paints polish really easily and polish really well. Some paints don't. So when you get into the paints that are more difficult to polish, you need to test first to see how your results are looking before you try to finish the whole car out that way. That's kind of the purpose of a test spot. Yeah. But this is an orbital, I mean a... Beautiful. Okay. That's right. This is a direct drive rotary buffer. Yeah. Does that feel good? It feels it's, very it's, nice. it's lightweight, isn't yeah, it? It's very light. Now look how nice that looks. Wait, when you come to high speed, is it wrong? Like, if I just lift it up just to go over it, like, does it continue here if I want to? Well, you can, as long as you're not putting pressure on it. Yeah. Release the pressure. Yeah, if this was me, I would tackle this as one section right here. Yeah. And I might go to a smaller pad because i got a raised body line right here. And i got one going right there. Anybody else want to try this? This is your chance. Oh, jump right in there. Okay. Where my polish go? Up here. There you go. Okay. Ready? There you go. You've done this before. <laughs> Hey, Joe. David. Um, now that we finished polishing this, if we want to put on a coat of Optico, would you like to wipe it as we're showing, or would you just go ahead and... Uh, if you want, just with a damp towel, just to remove any, any residue or stuff, and then put Optico on it. For a damp towel, could I use Opticlean? Uh, no, it's just water. water. Just water? Okay. I have to go walk to get water. Uh, you don't know get it? Is it yeah. in the back? I get it. I get it. <laughs> oh, I need some water on here. Just grab someone's water bottle. Right over there. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe. Can I get everybody's attention? Let's bring it, let's focus it back down here. Okay, so I just wiped off the hyper polish. Okay, it's all wiped off. I placed some water on a clean side of a folded microfiber towel per Dr. David Gaddisi here. So I'm just going to come down here very gently, wipe the paint, make sure we've got any of the polishing residues off. 
Can you kind of cover what you're talking about with the uh, the fillers? Yes. You're mentioning uh, about your the, your specifically about your products. Right. Uh, since we manufacture these products, uh, we we know that there's no uh, oils that will be left behind on the paint. So what you see is what you get. Whether you come back three days or three weeks or three months from now, once you remove the straw marks, it's gone. And then uh, what Mike did with the just a damp microfiber to remove any residues left. That's enough uh, prep uh, right here for putting the coating on. So. I present to you OptiCoat 2.0. Okay. When I first got this, I walked into my daughter's room and said, it's flu shot time. <laughs> <laughs> I put just a little bit on here, a couple of drops in there. You know, you put a little bit more at first just to get the tag man. And real gentle, I just see my little. Yeah, you look from an angle. Yeah, look at an angle. Yeah, look yeah. at this this real yeah. liquid shimmery little film that's going down there. Okay. It's almost invisible. Oh. <laughs> now you don't wet that with water before, do you? Oh. I got a little bit too much on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fired guys for less. So let's spread it out. All you gotta do is spread it out. Sometimes you'll get high spots. You know, I'm just trying to spread it out. And what I want to do, the reason I want it even is so it all dry the same spot. So we'll just stop there. I got some more here. I made a mess. I keep on going. I got plenty of I was waiting much product, but I get it. I'm a former Marine, so I really should waste on this. <laughs> all right, so what I'm waiting for is for the flash thing. You guys kind of see in here, you know, you, you tilt your head. You see these, these, these uh, the colors in here, some of it's kind of purple, some of it's kind of orange. Can you see it? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, when it when it gets there, that means it's flashed off. You know? Um, right here, it's still shiny. Can you see right there, it's shiny, where it's thicker. Here, it's purple and orangey, and here, it's still shiny. So, you can wait a little longer, or you can just smooth it out. And then, when all of it is that purple orange color, is that clean? Clean, clean and folded, ready I, to go. I start wiping where I started applying. And, uh, that's actually a little bit, it's a little longer there. What I did is I mashed down too much on the whole bunch shot out. Give that a second. Now you don't want to leave it overnight or leave it for hours, but you can just, you know, take your time and wait. There it is, about there. And then just nice and easy, wipe it off. That's all it is. Just leave a nice uniform appearance. Nice uniform appearance. You want to make sure it's all even. Come up there. <laughs> Sidewalk supervisor. Yeah. There you go. Nice and easy. And then uh, you want to tilt your head. Um, we, I'm a mobile detailer. We do use this outside, but it takes a little, you know, take your skill. You want to make sure it's all even. You want to dry it on, it's dry it on. And what do you think? It's all pretty much done. What do you do to get it on here? Uh, we put it on there. Put it on there on purpose. Please. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I do it. <laughs> you know, because I, I think it protects. Um, now, Get your fingertips and kind of touch it. Just touch it. Well, tell me what it feels like. Kind of grabby, kind of rubbery, right? Don't freak out. Like, you know, like I said, everybody wants to come and feel their pain and ooh, ooh, you know? No, you're going to get a little bit grabby to it. No big deal. It's shiny, it's protected, and don't, it'll, it'll dry and it'll get harder. If you, got, if you want to deliver the car with a real sick, slick, shiny uh, feel to it, then put a little quick detailer or your finger spray wipe right on top of it. Yep. Is that drying up now to do it? Um, yes, yeah. I, I like to wait a little longer, but I, I've been told by them you can, you can do it right away. But I like to wait. I like to do the whole car and just wait a little bit. And just before delivery, go ahead and put some on. Anyway, so the point is, is all we just did here was we just polished the paint. We applied the new OptiCoat. 2.0. Okay, this is the new consumer version. It's left down a an actual coating, so it's not a coat of wax on a paint cell. And you've got a protective coating there that's less mar resistant, more resistant to corrosion, and it looks great. It's going to last longer too. So if you're a detailer, you can upsell this. You know, it's a coating, so it's going to cost more. Well, the beading and sheeting ability of this now is like it hasn't been tested long enough to find out when it stops beading and sheeting. Just keeps yeah. on going. Yeah, I left instructions with my daughter to check the car when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've been using it for a year. Can we, can we go ahead, hold that question? Yeah, can we go ahead and take our seats? It's Over 10 here. minutes till. Everybody grab their seats.
everybody to take their seats. It'll be time to talk when the class is over. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Rennie, can I get you to come back up? Okay. Thank you. That's okay. It's normal. It comes. It's a natural thing. That's right. Well, that's normal, too. Okay, well, f first of all, I'd just like to thank you for attending this class today. First of all, I'd also like to give a big hand to Dr. David Gaddusi. I'd also like to really thank my two good friends, Renny Doyle, Joe Fernandez. And this is, uh, this is uh, you know, to be, be honest with you, this, uh, this brand new Optico 2.0, and just get some of the personal experience from Joe here, you're probably getting more information than just about anybody else out there in the whole detailing world. This is all firsthand, been there, done that, use it, shared it with you, just flattened out your learning curve. Wouldn't you agree? Okay, so, hey, um, Next classes we have coming up here are March 14th and 15th. Um, there is a flyer on your desk. Take that home. If you know anybody wants to go, let them know about it. These are full day classes. These are one hour mini classes because I know you guys want to get back out there, have some fun, check out the cars, get some good food, listen to music. You know, we're going to have three more classes tomorrow. There's the McGuire's class with Jason Rose back here in the corner. I think that class is completely filled up. If you didn't get signed up, There'll be demonstrations out at the McGuire's truck the entire rest of today and tomorrow. But the class, I'm pretty sure, is filled up. Yeah, question. Yeah, that's a question. What if you have high performance uh, stripes on a car, customized striping, and you put the product to uh, get the stripes? So you're talking about the matte flannel, uh, flat graphics, things like that, or, uh, or glossy? I have a matching stripe that I have an old car, and I'm matching it with a new car. It's a high performance uh, vinyl 3M product. If you got that product on the vinyl, would it do anything to it? or? It, 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 it'll seal it. It'll yep. protect it. It's not going to do any contact. I think the only thing that Dr. David Gaddusi said so far that you should put it on, official recommendations, is not to put it on glass. Okay? If you do that, you're on your own. So everything else? Anything exterior. Exterior. Yep. Well, then that, that was kind of where I was going to go. If you've got a, the thing about putting on a mat, a lot of the new cars, they put that mat, it's a flat looking vinyl graphic on there. And the only thing I tell people for things like this, if you're going to put something on there, you always want to test first in an inconspicuous area, and then let that test go over a few days and make sure it looks uniform, it looks how you want it to look, you know, before you do the whole vinyl graphic and cover the whole thing. What works really well on that matte finish is the spray wax. There you go. It works really well. If you've got a, if you've got a matte finish, that spray wax works awesome. Okay, and it's incredible. And what I've always used as a Meguiar's product for that is for trim. And because the problem with the things that are matte, if you put something on there that doesn't agree with it, it's going to turn it all pasty and, and opaque looking. And and the trend is for matte paint jobs. These flat paint jobs come out and to put graphics back on the cars. The problem is, is there's nothing really out there that's recommended for that type of surface. So whatever you want to put on there, test first. Okay, that's the biggest thing. But he's saying spray wax works. I've never I've never tried it on that, but I've used the Meguiar's trim detailer, the lotion, and the aerosol for years and had good luck with both of those. It restores a nice fresh look to it, doesn't seem to hurt at all, and it, you know, it adds to the whole car. Because if you buff out a car that's all swirled out, but you don't do nothing on the graphics, then it's incomplete. So you need to find something you can put on there that's going to give it a fresh look that's also not going to hurt it at the same time. I had another guy put his hand up for a question. What was that question? You know, okay. I need to get ready back to the seat because there's going to be a tour coming through here in five minutes. So, anyway, the classes are coming up. These are full day classes. The classes on Saturday is DA polishing. Uh, we're going to use the Porter Cable, the Griot's Garage, the McGuire's DA polishers, the Cyclo, and the Flex 3401. That's how to remove water spots, swirls, and scratches, polish up to high gloss. Detailing 102, that's how to wet sand, cut, and buff. So it's wet sanding by hand, wet sanding by machine, then using a rotary buffer with the wool pad to remove your sanding marks. We're already about for the foam pad to polish the high gloss, the DA to finish out. So those are coming up May 14th and May 15th. Take the flyer. I have an email sign up form up here also. If you want me to contact you to remind you or send you some information about it, make sure I get your email. 
And if you've never been to one of Mike's classes, go. He makes it really fun, and it's very knowledge Thank and science-based. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the real deal. We try to make them real fun. We try to make them really fun. So it's not just coming there and sitting down here more. We bring in rental cars for the Saturday class. For the, for the advanced class, we use these paint panels. So that way, if we do make a mistake, no one gets in trouble. And I have these painted. I have extra clear put on them, so there's plenty of material. Yeah, Merlin. Um, Mike. If you're putting the, the 2.0 on a paint finish, if you measure... Is it actually going to be thicker? That's yes. a good question. We did. It does. It shows up. And it makes sense if you're adding a, a layer on there that you're going to see a difference. It probably also depends on the, the paint thickness gauge. Some are more accurate than others. They have what they call basically a 5% gauge and 3% gauge. The more accurate, the smaller, the, the less amount of variation, the more accurate the reading, the tighter the spec's going to be. So. On a Chevelle, when I put it on in November, we put two, it was uh, two tenths of a mil. Wow, pretty, pretty. That's pretty impressive. Basically, I just co I just compounded the, the the car about four four or five months before that, and took off about a, just under a, a tenth of a mil. I had to go down to microns. So basically, everything I took off, you know, I need to the, the, put, put it back on. Again. Right. You know, Can you layer? Uh, if you want to layer, you have to uh, do the second application before it cures. Once it cures. It repels itself. The, the free polymer does not bond to, to the itself. pure polymer. Right. Interesting. Hey, I got a about that. In my opinion, it's a complete waste of time. Yeah, because one be. coat works fine. That's like if I brought you a plate of spaghetti and you're full, and you eat <laughs> one more plate of spaghetti, what for? One day, I'm full. You know what I mean? So why do it? Why bother? You know? I'm sure he'll sell more product and they'll sell more product. He'll be more happy. Put 20 coats on there. I fully agree with you all the thickness. Yeah. But you don't need it. You don't need it. See, everything comes in contact with the surface of paint, so having multiple layers, uh, the reason you're putting OptiCoat on is because it has much better properties than the, uh, on, you know, the factory clear. If you have several layers, you still get the same effect. Same yeah, good point. If I go this direction, I'm going to shoot you real quick. If we took and we had an Audi that one of our friends used in, in uh, Colorado, Travis, and he brought, it, he brought it to our shop, and we could tell where it was starting to wear down because it had been on there a while and, we're, and where the natural clear coat was coming back into place. Um, we actually reapplied it that time and it stuck fine because it was it, it, had, it had lived its surface or it, its surface life and was, was ready to be recoated back on. If you wanted to layer it, what is that window for before the cure? Uh, the, the curing on the 2.0 is uh, is about uh, 12 hours on the, the other pro product is is uh, within uh, 30 minutes it, it uh, cures, but uh, but you're doing one panel at a time. So if you're putting a second layer, you want to do one panel at a time. Alternatively, you can polish the surface to create more surface area so that it can bond to it. So you can take your polish as uh, uh, Ray said. You know, when you polish, you're only taking uh, you're not even taking uh, hardly any paint off. You have to wet sand and compound. You're taking tenth of a mil. So if you just polish or uh, you know uh, with a with a hyper polish, then you can put a second coat uh, on there and have enough bonding effect. And uh, let me just me mention also what uh, Jason asked about the uh, the matte finishes. You don't want to put coating on a matte finish if the customer uh, doesn't want the glossy finish because once you put point. clear on the matte, then it changes the look. So maybe you know, before you put it on there, <clears> test the ink and spin. Yeah, always test. So. But good question. If any more questions on layering, let's take that offline. Does anybody else have any other questions? Is okay. product available for us to buy here? I, I, we we carry it. We have an exclusive on it, I think, for two or three weeks. So we have it. I don't know if it's in stock. I don't know. You can go ask that. Here's, here, yeah, here's something you can do. Out in the vendor's area, you can go out there and check with them. And if it's out there, you can get it today. It wasn't yeah. stuck in stock this morning. I don't know. Okay. okay. Real quick. Tonight is a meet and greet at the Marriott. Joe and Randy will be there, correct? Gotcha. Dr. David will be there. I'll be there. Come on down, have some foods, cold refreshments. This guy, what's your name? Mark McGuire. What's, what's that? Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire will be down there. So come on down and meet Mark McGuire. <laughs> anyway, thank you for being here today. And with that, that's the end of our classes for today. Okay, hey, uh, 
The class is over for today, so we're going to be taking this live feed outside. We're going to get a chance to see the band, the cars, the trucks, the people, the vendors, everything. So stay tuned.